walk you through a set of calculations on the data that was provided by your, um, your pre-lab right up here for the gravimetric analysis of a carbonate, the, one of our first labs in AP Chemistry. So let's go down, and you can read the introduction there. Pretty good readers. So here's the pre-laboratory question. It states, an unknown metal carbonate, which we don't know what it is combined with it, was evaluated by gravimetric analysis and the following data recorded. What is the experimental formula, formula mass of this compound and determine the identity of the group 1A, group 1 metal, which is known as X. Also calculate and record the percent error of the experimental formula mass. Now before I go too much farther here, formula mass, since we don't know what this compound is, it's kind of like the molecular mass, but once we know the formula, we can determine that. In other words, it's the mass per mole. It's just another way of saying molecular mass. All right, so here's the data that was collected in this lab situation. Um, here it says crucible. We use an evaporating dish. So wherever you see crucible, I'm going to say evaporating dish. So the first thing that we want to do, or did, was weight out or mass the crucible the evaporating dish and found it to be 8.3 grams. Then the next thing we did, we added our unknown salt there, or our unknown solid, and the evaporating dish and got a mass of 9.34. The mass of the evaporating dish and then the mass of the unknown compound after the first drying. We're going to apply heat underneath the evaporating dish with the compound in there, nice and gentle. We're not gonna cook this thing. And you'll notice that the mass went down. Because again, this compound is a hydrate, some form of a hydrate. We don't know what type it is yet. So we want to evaporate all the water off first. Then we did a second heating and it came out to be that that was the actual mass after a couple more heatings. We found that the constant final mass was 9.31 grams. So let's first determine the mass of this unknown compound. How would you do that? Well, if we're looking for our unknown compound, it probably would stand the reason that we want to take this minus this. Okay, so we're going to take the difference of these two values here. So, nine, actually, let's do it on the other thing here. So, 9.31 grams minus, let me bring that back up, 9.31 minus 8.30. Luckily, I can do that in my head. So 1.01 grams. And this is of the unknown compound. Okay. So we don't know we don't know what X is, but we definitely know what the carbonate is. Okay, so we had, and let me erase that. Okay, so we took the, again, we took the difference of our final heating mass, our constant mass, minus the evaporating dish. Because again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of this. And if this is with that, then that's how we take it, this minus that. Okay, so our mass for that was 101 grams. That is some water, just to make it soluble. And then we're going to react it with our calcium carbonate, okay? So the calcium carbonate has a chance to react with this according to the, the calcium carbonate has a chance to react with this according to the equation that's listed up here. So we don't know what our, our compound is. Calcium chloride is going to react with that, but we do know that when calcium comes in contact with the carbonate, we're going to form a solid precipitate. This stays in the solution. So the identifier, the metal that we're trying to identify, stays in solution. And actually, we're going to wash it away, which is pretty neat. So coming back to this, what we're going to do is we're going to react that solution and then we're going to weigh out the precipitate. So first thing we need to do is find out what the mass of the filter paper is. In this case, it was one gram. And then we're going to pour out our solution through the filter paper and collect all the calcium carbonate. And then we're going to allow it to sit and dry. So this, we'll come back and finish this lab a little bit later on. So we're really, we're not even gonna use have one of those pieces of data, it'll be our constant masses once it's all done and dry. So we want to find out what is the mass of the calcium carbonate. So again, take the difference of those two, the filter paper minus the calcium carbonate. I like this math, this is good. So 0 0.069 grams. So we have 0 0.069 grams of calcium carbonate. 
And then the next part asks, well, what is the moles of the calcium carbonate? Well, that's not difficult to do. So now that we know how many grams of calcium carbonate, we can now determine what the molar mass of that is. And again, one mole calcium carbonate, 40.08 grams plus 12.01 grams plus 3 times 16. And all of that weighs, weighs 100.09 grams. Okay. So there's your molar mass. So then we take that, we find out how many moles. So in this, I get 0 0.00689 moles of calcium carbonate. Okay, so I know how many moles of calcium carbonate I have. So let's go ahead and put that in the data table. So 689, so 00, is it zero, zero? Two zeros. Six, eight. So that's our moles of calcium carbonate. So to find the empirical formula mass, what that's saying is the molecular formula mass of that compound. So we know how many moles of the calcium carbonate we have. So if it's a one-to-one -one ratio for our compound that is this to this, is it not true that we have the same ratio? Good. And if we know that we have 101 grams of this, let's slide that on down and extend that. So to find the formula mass or the molecular mass, we take the mass of our compound, the mass of our compound, our unknown, that we measured out, and after our drying and all the water was evaporated, we're going to divide that by, oops, that's not grams, that's moles, by our mole amount, of our calcium carbonate, which is okay because again it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So we have our 0 0.00689 moles. And look at that, we get our units to be in grams per mole. And when we go and do the calculation, we get 146.58 grams per mole. So there's the molar mass, our molecular mass, our formula mass of our compound. Okay. So 146.58. Let's scoot that up a little bit. 146.58 and that is grams per mole. And so the atomic mass of the X within that, well, let's do a calculation here. In that. So since we know that our compound is this, and we're looking for X, and we know that this compound has a molecular mass of 146.58. How can we find out what X is? If we know this, and we know these, but well, we don't know that. Ah, very good. So you can take 146.58 grams per mole and subtract that by whatever the molar mass of the carbonate is. Okay. And if you type that in, carbon's 12.01, so 12.01 grams plus the 30, no, sorry, 48 grams there per mole, that comes out to be 60, 60.01 grams per mole. So now what that's telling us that if I take the difference of those two I get a mass of 86 point we'll say 0 07 grams per mole and that equals x2. So how do we find what x is? Very good. Take this divide by 2 and now that will equal x. So whatever that is I typed it over here, about 43.3. Scroll that on down. So X is equal to 43.3 grams per mole. Okay, so we just, we found the formula mass for this compound. The next thing that we want to do,
Okay, let's write that down in our data table. So the atomic mass we said was 43.3 grams per mole. Okay. And closest atomic mass in group 1A metals. Let's see if I can find my periodic table. And if I come over here to group 1A and look for something around 44, well, there's 39. Ooh, it's got to be potassium. Potassium is definitely the closest one on this one. So we'll say that this represents for potassium. Okay. okay. So the theoretical formula mass of the compound, theoretical formula mass of the compound, well, to do that, we know that we have to have this. So let's go and determine that. So back to you. Okay, so we've got our formula mass for K2CO3, 2 times 39.1 plus, we just said it was 60 point something up there. What was 60.01? So there is your molecular formula mass. That's our theoretical. Okay, so 138.21. So let's put that in our table. So 130. Let's see. 138. What did I say? 21. And then it wants you to calculate the percent error, and this looks nice, but again, when we look at what we're used to using, again, you do your lab amount minus the true amount over your true amount times 100. Okay. So, we know that we have our experimental was 146.58 our experimental our experimental was here the 146.58 so we'll go 146.158 or 58 58 good okay 58 grams minus what well, we just calculated 138.21 the absolute value of that in this case it's going to be a positive value so we're good divided by what it really should be 38.21 times 100 yeah, that doesn't look like that's going to be too bad and that turns out to be 6.05 percent well i hope you can get it that close that's good okay so 6.05 is our percent error.